God, would you bow your heads with me this morning and, and let's just enter into prayer. Father God, hallelujah, we've lifted up your name and we've worshipped you, Lord God. It is good to worship the Lord. It is yes. good to bless you, Lord God, to you. raise up your name, to shout the praises, to declare Jesus. the word of the Lord, hallelujah, to say hallelujah, which Glory. is the highest praise, Lord God, to adore you, to revere you, to esteem you, to exalt you, to lift you up, Lord God, because you are good and your mercy endures forever. My Lord God, we've, we've opened up our hearts to you, and I just pray now, Lord, that you would keep us alert. Keep us sensitive to your word. Yes. I pray for a double portion of anointing yes. on your yes. servant this morning, Lord. Put a battle axe in yes. my mouth. Touch my lips yes. with a burning coal from your altar. I pray, Lord God, that your word would not return void, Lord God. That it would go out and do what it is set forth to do, Lord God. I pray that your word would produce fruit. Yes. That your word would be planted deep in our hearts, Lord God. And it would spring forth and multiply. That your word would produce healing. That your word would produce deliverance, Lord. Yes. That your word would produce salvation. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Even repentance, my God. Praise God. Let your word cover over us and wash yes. over us, Lord. Righteous word. We God. implore you now to be with us, Lord God, and speak. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. For those that have their Bibles, I'm going to ask you to open up to one of my faves. Psalm Hallelujah. chapter 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salmos, capítulo 1, for those that speak Spanish, praise God. The title of today's message is going to be called A Perpetually Blessed Walk. How many want to live in perpetual yes. blessing? Amen. How many want to live in See, perpetual yes. abundance, prosperity? Amen. And I'm not just talking financial, hallelujah. I'm talking the whole gamut, Amen. praise God. Health. Provision, you know, blessings, Lord God, hallelujah. You can do all things, my Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Psalms 1 is a great start for one of the best and favorite books in the Bible about worship and adoration. Amen. And it starts out by talking about being blessed. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You haven't say amen. amen. Lord, amen. Lord. We're going to read the entire chapter. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall, turn your neighbor say, he's talking about you, hallelujah. hallelujah. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That bring forth its fruit yes. in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does Amen. shall prosper. Oh, Hallelujah. Woo! Makes me want to run around here and do cartwheels. Hallelujah. But that would be a pretty sight. <laughs> the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for that beautiful word. Praise God. How many want to live a life full of blessing? Yes. A life that is filled with the presence of God. Blessed wife, blessed husband, blessed children, blessed finances, blessed everything, blessed health, blessed car, everything, everything working in full order. Amen. Glory to God. We can live this life. Everyone goes through life looking for blessing. Am I a little loud this morning? Yes. All right. Brother Jose, I know he's back there somewhere. Could you lower that speaker for me just a touch? Praise God. Because I have a tendency of getting excited. I'll start shouting and everybody's hair will be like this by the time they get home. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. But everyone comes through life looking to be blessed. Everyone hopes that their loved ones, their family, their friends, they're all living blessed lives. Everyone wants to receive the very greatest blessings of God. Is that the truth? Amen. Praise God. What is it like to be truly blessed? What must life be like 
to live in complete blessing. Where do the true blessings of the Lord come from? And is it possible to actually live blessed every single day of our life? The answer to that question, my brothers and sisters, is yes and amen. Hallelujah. But there's a catch. Hallelujah. You know it was coming. There's a catch. There's a catch. The catch is total surrender to the living God. Amen. The catch is denial of self, death of your old man, death to your old will, death to doing everything in the former way, but doing everything God's way. Amen. Blessings are a byproduct of serving Christ. Do you know what a byproduct is? A byproduct means it happens naturally. You know, it's like throwing up, uh, something up in the air, it comes down, it's, it's, it's a result, a byproduct. It's going to happen the exact way it's supposed to happen. When you serve Christ, when you surrender to Christ, the byproduct of living a life of servitude to the living God is a life filled with blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. It's an automatic. You don't have to hope for it. You don't have to pray for it. It comes supernaturally. When have you ever read or even heard in scripture Jesus praying for a blessing? Mm -hmm. Has Jesus ever once said, Lord, please bless me. Lord, please, I need to pay my rent. Lord, please bless me. I need to pay my car. Lord, please bless me. I, I don't have food to eat. When Jesus had the disciples feed the 10,000, right? He said, well, all we have is a few loaves of bread, a couple of fish. What are we going to do with this? He says, you, you feed them. That's what we're going to do. Give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord. Bring me all the baskets. Come on, let's do this. Bring me the baskets. Bring me all the baskets. And he just said, Father God, we thank you for the blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead, sir. You know, we think it was some formula, some, right. some get-rich-quick formula. No, it's a result, a byproduct of serving the Lord. The problem is, most of us don't spend time with the Lord. See, every miracle in Scripture, it didn't catch Jesus by surprise that there was going to be 10,000 people and there was only going to be a few loaves of bread and a few fish. Right. Jesus separated himself. He prayed. He went alone, just like we talked in the, in the men's retreat. David encouraged himself in the Lord. David was a man after God's own heart. Jesus went into the wilderness and separated himself. He ventilated vertically. He went up to the living God. He says, I know you are the sustainer of life. I know you are my provider. I know you're my source. You are everything, Lord God. And, and the Lord began to show everything. So when the miracles came, they, they did not catch him by surprise. We cannot live a life full of blessing, apart from Christ. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, he might be talking about you right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> might be, praise God. The New Testament is all about blessing. When you go from the beginning of Matthew all the way to Revelation, it's about grace and peace and love and God's mercy and God's forgiveness. It's all about blessing. The book of Matthew starts with the lineage of Jesus pointing to, to him as God's greatest blessing to mankind. Thank you, Lord. Without Christ, no blessing. No Christ, no blessing. It's a little play on words. But to know Christ is to know blessings. Hallelujah. When we are totally submitted and totally doing the will of God in our life and trusting Him, we are living blessed. Glory to God. People today are seeking temporal blessings. You know what I mean by temporal blessings? A car is a temporal blessing. Even a home is a temporal blessing. Clothes, jewelry, all those things are temporal blessings. They're material gain, material good. You can't take any of it. Ask Solomon, one of the richest men who ever walked the face of this earth. He had everything. He had 300 wives. He had 700 concubines. Talk about having everything. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. And, and you know, some of us, we have trouble with one. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just kidding. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. My wife is the greatest blessing besides the Lord of my life. I love that one. Chocolate caramel right there. Praise God. 
I'm not being scared to say it. Praise God. But we seek temporal blessings. Temporal blessings. And then, you know, what happens is, where is our commitment to Christ? Christ says, follow me. Seek me first, the kingdom of God. Seek the kingdom of God first, and all things shall be added unto you, right? But what we do is we try to look for these little temporal things because we feel that if we have them, we have some source of blessing, some source of substance, some source of reputation. You know, because sometimes if we got the boat, we got the car, we got the motorcycle, we got the house, we got the clothes, we got the jewelry, we feel like, ah, I've arrived. And the Bible says in the book of Luke, Luke 12, it says, You foolish man, for today your soul would be required of thee. You can't take nothing of that. You can't take any of this with you. Amen. Praise God. People try to juggle. And if they could juggle it, they could juggle God and juggle the church and juggle the world. They try to live their life juggling. The Bible says, no one can serve two masters. For either, either he will hate one and love the other, or else he'll be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon, of course, is money. Let me talk about the word uh, blessing and, and to, to really adore. The word is barak. I'm not talking about Barack Obama. Stop tripping. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the Hebrew word called Barack. Barack means to adore God. To kneel in adoration to God. And here's another thing that blew my mind. The word Barack is for God to adore you. Ooh, think about that. For God to adore you. And for God to benefit you. For God to salute you. To please you. To congratulate you. And to thank you. Why would God do such a thing? We are nobody. We're specks of dust. We're a mist in the wind. Why would God adore us? Why would God love us? You know why? Because that is God's nature. God is love. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever, that's you and me, whosoever believes upon Him will never perish but will have everlasting life. That's a love that we don't know anything about. He says, while you were enemies of God, yet He went to the cross anyway. That's a love. He says, you know, for, for, for uh, one will die uh, for, for uh, a family member, but for someone to die for a friend, what kind of love is that? And God died for us all, even enemies. God wants to love you, and God loves you, and wants to bless you, and wants to be everything for you. Because the love of God is His very nature. God loves everyone. He died for you. He blesses you, even when you don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. Now, let me take you back just a little bit. Very bit, very bit, very to the very beginning. In the Garden of Eden, hallelujah, Genesis 5-2, it says, He created them male and female, and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. We are adored by God. We are precious in His sight. Like a baby is precious to us. We were created to live and be in constant blessing with God. And true blessings came to Adam and Eve in their a relationship with God. In the presence of the living God. Amen. Healing, health, supply, provision, joy, peace. Favor, love, companionship, all of these things were a byproduct of serving the living God. Amen. Adam and Eve, you never read about this in scripture, but they never prayed for a blessing. The blessing was automatic. They received the blessing because of God's love for them and because of their relationship. But sin changed all of that. Praise God. God cannot, will not, and refuses to ever bless sin. 
If you are double-minded in your thinking, the Bible says, let a double-minded man not expect anything of the Lord. Don't even think of asking God to bless you when you are breaking His laws. Hallelujah, it's going to get thick in here. Hallelujah, but I ain't scared this morning. Proverbs 28, 9. The Bible talks about the adulterous woman in this, in this beginning part of the verse, but it says here, in Proverbs, uh, uh, oh, Proverbs 28, 9, I didn't put a thing here, but it says, One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. One who turns his ear away from the law, even his prayer is an abomination. So, for example, I'll get back to the crust of bread in a minute. It's not cool to have sex with your boyfriend or your girlfriend out of wedlock and expect God's blessing. It's not cool to be pro-choice as a Christian which to me is an oxymoron. Yeah. It's not cool to be a pro-choice Christian and still be a, a, a servant of the Lord and justify it because everybody else is doing it. Dr. Edwin Lewis Cole, he has a great quote. It says, abortion is too often simply an atonement for the consequences of sexual immorality. We atone for the sin of sexual immorality by aborting a child. Sin removes the automatic rendering of God's blessing. Now we can go to the crust of bread. The Bible says when you are with an adulterous person and you give in to that sin, and I'm not talking just about a woman or a man. I'm talking about spiritual adultery too. When you pick up other idols and, and put them in the place of God in your life. That's called spiritual adultery. The Bible says that sin reduces you to a crust of bread. Dr. Cole again, another quote. It says, don't let someone else create your world for you. For when they do, they will always create it too small. And isn't it Satan who minimized the spiritual blessings that Adam and Eve had in the garden? Didn't he say, has God said? You know, trying to take the word of God and twist it around to deceive. He made them believe the lie that God was holding out blessing. He made them focus on the one thing they couldn't have instead of all the trees, of all the things that God blessed them with. Why? Because he is a lie. He is the father of lies. And anyone who abides in a lie runs with the devil. Hallelujah. The devil stole the blessing. The Bible says in John 10.10, 10, The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Jesus wants you to be returned to your inheritance. Yes. Return to your blessing yes. this morning. How many want that yes. this morning? Yes. Praise God, I do. Yes. Glory to God. But we need to be careful of what we take in. We have eye gates, ear gates, you know, mouth gates. We've got gates and we leave them gates wide open. Hallelujah. We've got media, we've got Hollywood, the music industry. Here, we got Oprah Winfrey. Now she has this whole big thing coming on about believing. Yeah. Yeah. Believing what? Believe Jesus, woman. Hallelujah. Get it together. There is no other thing to put belief in. It's Jesus Christ. He is the way. He is the truth. Amen. He is the life. There is none other Amen. who died for your sin. Jesus is the man. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Not Mohammed. Not Buddha. Not Hare Krishna. Not all these other knuckleheads claiming to be Christ. You want my attention? Come out of your tomb. Come out of your grave and maybe you'll have my attention. Praise God. Jesus is the only one. We have to understand that all these things are preaching into your soul. Yes. They're preaching inside. We are the sum total of every word spoken to us. If you're looking at garbage, if you're receiving garbage, if you're taking in garbage, garbage in, garbage out. It's very simple. 
Matt, uh, Proverbs 10.19. In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. Usually, when the world is telling you to take this in and try this and listen to that, and that you'll be blessed, we, we start to dabble into the things of the world. We start to take upon ourselves all these different little things. And then, when it's too late, we find ourselves with the excuses, with the logic, with the rationalization, with trying to justify, trying to cover up. Didn't Adam and Eve also take little leaves, little fig leaves, and try yeah. to cover up their sin? Right. Try to, instead of just saying, you know what, Lord, we've sinned against you. We have failed. But they tried to cover up. That's called fig leaf religion. Right. If I could just put a little fig leaf on, nobody's going to see my dirt. Nobody's going to see nothing. And I'm, I'm, I'm innocent. But God sees everything. We can't try to play games with the Lord. No. We're not going to find our source of blessing in anything that the world has to offer. Right. In anything. Why is it that I read of all the time billionaires who commit suicide? Mm -hmm. Or Hollywood celebrities, actors, actresses that take their life. You would think they have everything that they need. Why is it that all these famous celebrities and, and personalities, TV personalities, are all going to Betty Ford Clinic and all going to all these different places, psychologists, and they're depressed and they're fearful and they're hopeless? Why is it? Very simply, because they don't have relationship with the one who can change all of those things. Hallelujah. And so they are looking for a blessing. There it is. Hallelujah. And all they get is an alarm. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, I, I combed through the Old Testament. I'm going to go through this really quickly. Since the Garden of Eden, everyone, since sin came in, everyone has been looking to be reconnected with their blessing. Everyone's been looking to reconnect. All decisions in life are, ble are based upon the blessings or the lack of blessings. And, and many times in the Old Testament, it all ended up at the end in a curse. So let's see how it plays out. In the beginning, Adam and Eve were created. They were built to live with the perpetual blessing. And they lost it. Cain killed his brother Abel because he was jealous of his brother's blessing. Noah built an ark to preserve life on earth from everyone who sought after a carnal blessing. Abraham was going to be blessed more than anyone on the earth, more than the stars in the sky, more than the sands on the beach. Sarah couldn't wait for the blessing, so she jumped ahead of God's plan, and we have these Middle Eastern conflicts now because of that. Hagar was brought into the blessing that she didn't even ask for. Jacob wrestled God for his blessing. Esau was robbed of his birthright blessing for a bowl of soup. I hope there was some shrimp in there or something. <laughs> Praise God. Joseph endured hard years of slavery in prison when he shared his dream of his own blessing. That's right. Moses was raised in an Egyptian palace full of the world's blessings. Israel was blessed by God and delivered from their captivity. Joshua conquered army after army, war after war, to ensure the land God promised to Israel would be blessed. Until sin entered the camp. Rahab was about to die, but instead was added to the blessing and even included in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Achan and his family were killed because he robbed a blessing of silver from Ai. Gideon and his army were reduced to 300 to see the blessings of the Lord. Samson lost his strength and his sight because of his insatiable desire and lust for carnal blessings. Hannah pleaded with God for her baby blessing. Samuel was unable to pass on a king's blessing to the wrong brothers, but the oil flowed for the right brother. Saul was disobedient to his blessing and ultimately fell on his own sword. Jonathan's loyalty to Saul cost him his blessing, but Jonathan's son Mephibosheth was blessed by David. 
David had so much blessing, yet he wanted even more and murdered for it. And the sword never departed from his house. Solomon denied himself no blessing that his eyes or his heart wanted. And in the end, his last words were, it's all vanity. Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal and was blessed to see the power of God fight for him. Nehemiah built a wall of blessing to protect Israel inside. Esther almost died for her blessing. Job suffered like no one ever in history for his blessing. The prophets spoke regarding the blessings and the cursings of God. Daniel was blessed inside the lion's den. Hosea had to wait for his blessing by marrying a prostitute to symbolize God's anger with Israel. And ironically, after all of that, the last word in the book of the Old Testament, the book of Malachi, the last word is cursed in the Old Testament. Everyone is looking for blessings, but are we willing to walk with God to get them? Psalms is the book of worship. It's the book of poetry and scripture. The Bible starts out right here in the book of Psalms with... He, blessed is he who walks not, stands not, and sits not in the counsel of anything ungodly. Every one of our movements, everything that we do, should be apart from the world and surrendered to God. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen out of that? Amen. Praise God. The blessed man is the man who delights in God's law. And on this law he meditates day and night. That means we're to internalize the Word of God, ingest it, take it in, take it totally inside, and walk in love, loving God, being in His will. How many know that when you are in God's will, now I'm not going to say perfect will and permissible will because there's only one will, and that's God's will. When you are in God's will, there's a change that's going to be produced. Yes. Amen. And those changes lead to blessing. Our walk with God must first be predicated on one simple fact. Ye must be born again. You must be born again of spirit. Not of the flesh, but of the spirit. Apart from Jesus, there is no walk. But neither is there a relationship with God. Now I'm going to hit you with something. I could have put all these zombie pictures up here, but I ain't doing that, praise God. But apart from Jesus, we're all walking dead. We think we're alive. We think we're carrying on with our daily function apart from God. But guess what? You're walking right in, straight in to hell. That's the truth. It's a hard truth, but it is the truth. Anyone walking outside of God's saving grace is not walking alive, but they're walking dead. They're doomed. There are no blessings. There are no promotions. There's no joy, there's no peace, there's no provision, there's none of those things, there's no favor. We're just biding our time before death. <laughs> Romans 6.23, it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. There are careless, casual Christians that live day by day with no regard for their relationship with Jesus Christ. They don't know anything. They don't feel anything. They don't want anything. They don't desire anything. And truthfully, anyone who does not desire to go deeper with God, I really seriously must question your desire to serve God at all. Amen. Every one of us in this room, if we love God, and we're worshiping God, and we really claim to be a child of God, we should be devoted to Him. We, every heartbeat, every waking breath should be, I want to get closer to you, Lord. I want to know you more. I want to spend more time with you, Lord. Yeah, we got things that happen in life. There are things that distract us, but there should never be a, a, a lack of desire to, to have intimacy and fellowship with the living God. Amen. If that is not your desire, then I must question. If I lost that desire, I would question myself. Lord, what's happening to me? Yes. I would take analysis right away. Well, what, what did I allow in my life? What, what am I feeding myself? What did I take in that's causing me to walk away, to stray, or to not believe, or to doubt you, to, to, to not trust you anymore? What have I allowed, Lord God? 
I'd be like David, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me. Re please don't take your Holy Spirit from me, Lord God. Psalm chapter 1, it points us to a deeper, more solid, more productive walk with God. It's trying to get you to live in perpetual blessing. A perpetual blessing, a relationship with God where He speaks to you and you hear His voice and you speak to Him and He hears your prayers where you move and walk in the freedom and the liberty of the Holy Ghost. Yes, and you're not taken by surprise about anything. Right, amen. You're just walking in hand in hand with the King of Kings. Yes. So I'm going to talk about three points this morning. The points are going to be to look around to look inside and look ahead. Three points. Look around, look inside, and look ahead. Point. Looking around. How are you being influenced? The Bible says, "He Blessed is he who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. There are only two ways that we are influenced. Godly or ungodly. That's it. There's only two ways that we're influenced as people. What are we allowing to influence us? Our decisions, our direction, our purpose. The Bible says we are all children of wrath. But in Christ, we became children of light. Are we still choosing darkness or are we living in His glorious light? Are there any open portals in our life? Are there any ungodly influences which only grow and get worse as time goes on. We know that sin promises to serve and please, but it will only enslave and dominate. We will never be satisfied in our sin. We just go deeper and deeper and deeper, and there is no bottom. You could be in the fungal, the mud, the dirt, the mire, the bottom of the barrel. And you're still not satisfied. You still are looking for something more sick, more twisted, more wicked to get yourself involved in because the flesh is insatiable, it craves, and it does not get satisfied. Horoscopes and all this nonsense and psychics and magazine columns and talk shows and gurus we get our advice and instruction from all these little avenues instead of going to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, Blessed is he that walks not, stands not, sits not, in the counsel of the ungodly. What is Oprah Winfrey going to teach you? What is Dr. Phil going to give you? Nothing. The living Word. That's what we should get our source from. That's what we should get our advice from. Thank you, Lord. What about those that stand? In the way of sinners. After consulting ungodly stuff, after we hear uh, advice, you know what? You know what, girl? You really should move on. Well, you know what, girl? You should just do this. You should do that. You know what, girl? If I was you, I would leave him. You know, dude, I would have let my woman talk to me like that. You know, meanwhile, they don't have a girlfriend or a boyfriend of their own. <laughs> it's just ridiculous to me. <laughs> <laughs> Taking advice from people that have no body. And saying, you know, that's, that's a pretty good idea. Maybe I should do that. <laughs> Talking to somebody about just ridiculous. I, I'm not going to go there. Hallelujah. Lord God. Put a guard on me, Lord God. Okay. <laughs> After getting this crazy advice, then we move on. And start doing the things that we were advised to do. And now we end up with the ungodly. Mm -hmm. We're not opposing their viewpoint. We're embracing everything that goes on. Everything they say. We get quiet and shy and bashful. We don't want to make no waves. <laughs> we don't want to stir the pot. We don't, want to, we don't want nobody to be offended. Uh -huh. So we just go with the flow. We see all kinds of wickedness. Drugs, debauchery, sexual immorality, homosexuality. We see, we see the whole gamut, the whole list, and it's cool. We're all right with it because I'm just tolerating. I'm coexisting. Come on. I'm coexisting. 
That's it. And there's only one viewpoint worth having, and that's God's. Everything yes. else is trash. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. We cannot continue to take the counsel and then stand in the way of sinners, and then we end up sitting in the seat of the scornful. I couldn't find a whole bunch of scornful people on the couch, but I found one. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. But I tell you, if the remote control is more in your hand than the Bible is, there's a problem. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> We start to sit. We become restful. The restful place. We start to sit. After we've embraced all this stuff, we start to sit in it because we don't even realize we're in the mud. We land comfortably in a position that we're very content with. And we accept it and make our home with it. And we take our seat among the scornful. And then we begin to sit and mock and criticize, scoff, laugh at, everything holy, everything godly, everything that, you know, now, those that are Christians, they're freaks, they're holy rulers, oh, I don't want nothing to do with them, you know why? Because your conscience is so seared, that's got a hot iron, that you can't even allow the word of God to penetrate, didn't Jesus say, take away the stone, when Lazarus was dead in that tomb, he said, roll the stone. Sometimes we have such a stony heart that the stone needs to be rolled away before the living word of God can give us life to the dead body that's in the tomb of our heart. And Jesus needs to say, arise and come forth in the name of Jesus. How are we being influenced? There's so many things out there. TVs, movies, music, media, even video games. And then everybody says, well, you know what? All I do is listen to the beats. How many of you have heard that ridiculous <laughs> statement? <laughs> all I do is listen to the beats. That's all I do is listen to the beats. But the words of those songs are going right inside your heart. Amen. Then next thing you know, you're cursing out your mother, you're cursing out your Come father, you're cursing out the principal, you're cursing out the teacher, you're cursing out your job, now. now you're rebellious, now you're acting up, now you're acting like a fool, and then you wonder why, you know, nobody understands you. <laughs> why are they picking on me? Everybody always picking on me. They, they just don't get me. No. <laughs> we get you, all right. We know exactly what's going on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope y'all love me after this one. Praise okay. God. If they were lettuce and tomatoes, be like, oh. <laughs> Praise God. No, I'm, I'm not scared. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Do you know, millions of dollars are spent each year on advertising. Yeah. You know, Super Bowl commercials, they spend $3 million for 30 seconds. Because marketers know that advertising influences. Yeah. It'll create impulse shopping. It'll create impulses that you didn't even know you had. Do you know that, that, how many have ever heard that breakfast is the most important part of your daily meal? It's the most important meal of the day. Fact, it's not true. You know who, who first made that statement? Kellogg's. Kellogg's. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Don't miss breakfast. And now on sale, Wheaties. Fruity, fruity loops. And we're God, we're breakfast. Oh, I gotta get my breakfast. I didn't even know breakfast today. <laughs> yeah, we're so influenced. We don't we, we don't understand, but we're being influenced at every corner. And then we make it seem like it's law, like it's for real. Because we don't know any better. Godly influence. The person who's walking with God is going to walk in the light. Doesn't get infected by the things of the world because he's got the helmet of salvation on, guarding and protecting his mind. He's got the breastplate of righteousness guarding the darts and the launching attacks of the enemy. He's got the shield of faith. He's got the belt buckle of truth. He's got the feet that are shod with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have our full armor on. We're walking with the armor of light. He that delights himself in the word of God is the person that is kazaking himself. Kazaking himself. That word means to encourage yourself you, in the Lord. Hallelujah. We need to have that hunger. First Peter, it says, 1 Peter 2, 2 and 3, as newborn babes desire 
the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Yes, he is. Do you know, there are people that serve the Lord for 20 years and are still on biblical milk. It's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. If, if by now, if, if somebody asks you, how long have you been serving the Lord? Well, I've been serving the Lord now, let's see, uh, 11 years, 12 years? Praise God. Amen. Well, you know what? I have a problem. Uh, one of my friends is asking me about Jesus because he doesn't believe that Jesus was a real person. Why do you believe in Jesus? We're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> After 11 years, you should know oh, why you believe in Jesus Christ. You. you should be able to defend the faith, defend the gospel. I praise the Lord for Brother Vincent. Every time he comes up here, he's giving us some uh, uh, apologetics. Apologetics is not an apology. It's biblical proof. It's defending the faith. The word apologetics is to defend the faith. We have to understand that we are in this walk and we should be growing every day. Yes. There's some of us that should be teachers by now. We should be teaching somebody, helping somebody, taking somebody in. But we stay perpetually in a state of infancy that's just unacceptable. There has to be a desire to grow. Amen. Our spiritual appetite gets dulled when the world is mixed in with our walk with God. We need to pray and ask God to give us that hunger again, that thirst for His yes, Word, Lord. that godly influence which can only be found in His Word. We need to meditate on God's Word day and night. It's not enough to just read it. We need to study it and take it in. Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. So how can we stay clean when the world is so filthy? Washing of the water of the world. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. A couple of quick verses. Psalm 119, 9. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to thy word. John 15, 3, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. You see, the word is what cleans. John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. I didn't have this scripture here, but Psalm 119, uh, verse 160, the entirety of thy word is truth. Second point, look inside. What are you becoming? How are we influenced? What, what kind of influence is reflecting on our character? Look deep inside of your heart this morning and ask yourself, what kind of person am I? Do people want to be around me? Am I a good influence on others? Am I a blessing to other people? Or am I nicking somebody's card? The person who delights in God's Word and meditates the Bible says he's like a tree planted by the river of living water, the river of water where he's never going to wither, never going to fade away. They're healthy, they're strong, they're full of life, full of fruit, able to withstand all types of storms. Mm -hmm. The identifying factors of people that are in God's word are people that are fruitful. They bring forth fruit in its season. They are refreshing and nourishing to be around. You go away from them feeling blessed, feeling strengthened, feeling encouraged. Your appetite, your spiritual needs are awakened and stimulated when you're around people who meditate in the Word of God. People who are like that are durable. The Bible says their leaf shall not wither. They're prosperous. That means everything that they do, everything that they do, every word is blessed. It's prosperous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. That means sometimes you're going to go through some adversaries. Sometimes you're going to go through some crisis. Sometimes you're going to go through problems. But you're still going to be blessed. You're still going to be healed. You're still going to be able to walk through with your head held up high. Not with your head and everything all cast down. You're going to walk with confidence, firmness, knowing that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Hallelujah. The Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Thank you, Lord. Are you like a tree planted by the water this morning? 
Or are you the chaff that is just blown away in the wind? You might think you're fooling people, but inside, what's really in there is going to be revealed in a given time. My last point. Looking ahead, how will you be judged? Verses 5 through 6 talks about that. There is a destiny that we're all going to be a part of. A judgment day that is approaching. Will you be judged among the godly or the ungodly? The Bible says the ungodly will not be able to stand on the judgment day. No one will have an excuse. We won't be able to give any excuses, any stories. We can't put on our tap dance shoes and da 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 We're not, it's not going to happen. Can't sing and dance. God sees through all that stuff. Lies, all your plans, your self-righteousness, it won't amount to nothing. You're going to have to look God right in the eye. And you're going to know that you're standing before a holy, holy pure, righteous, just God. And no one will have an excuse. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. In heaven, <coughs> there's only one congregation of the righteous. There are no sinners there. Jesus said, I will separate the sheep from the goats. There will only be one pure and holy congregation, and that is the redeemed, the blood-brought children of the Most High God. If I didn't think or didn't believe that I would be included in that number, I would make a difference, and I would change that today. Psalm 1-6 <laughs> The Lord knows the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly will perish. Jesus knows His own. Jesus knows their ways. He knows if they're clinging on to the cross or not. The way of repentance and the way of faith is through Christ Jesus. The ungodly they have their own way. They do what they please. They do what they want. They answer to no one. They go the way of Cain. They go their own way. They do their own works. The way of flesh. The way of self-righteousness. The man-made religion. They bow down and worship at the altar of the God of me, myself, and I. The false trinity. What way will you go this morning? The way of righteousness, surrounded by God's love, by godly influence, meditating on His Word day and night. Are you going to be perpetually blessed in all areas of your life? Are you going to be a blessing to others? Are your, is your fruitful vine, is, it, is your fruit going to be so blessed that you add blessing to other people? That when you're around people, they feel blessed because they were with you too? Are you going to sharpen iron like iron sharpens iron? Are you going to be an extension of God's hand on this earth? Are you going to be a blessing to others? To lift them up? To encourage them? To stand in the gap for them? To pray for them? Or are you going to go your own way? And do it your own way? I always say this, you know that song, I did it my way. It's the, it's the anthem for hell. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to be perpetually blessed? The Bible says that the righteous prosper. Everything they do. Are you, are you hearing that? Thank you. Everything. That, that leaves nothing out. Everything that you do prospers. It's a byproduct of walking with God. That's the answer. Many are saying, how do I get blessed? How do I live blessed? How do I find solutions to my problem? Walk with God. Amen. Surrender to God. And everything that you do, everything is going to prosper. God's going to develop a godly character. You're going to live in perpetual blessing. Even in the storm, you will have peace. You will have provision. You will have all those things and healing and health and all that. The ungodly are the walking dead. 
They are dead in sin and don't even realize it. They are dead in their transgressions and they are walking to their graves. They are walking to hell without even knowing it. And I'm closing it. For real, this time I'm closing. Hallelujah. I found this little quote a while back. It's uh, June 12, 1994 in the little devotional books in our daily bread. It says, Sow a thought and you reap an act. Sow an act and you reap a habit. Sow a habit and you reap a character. And sow a character and you reap a destiny. That's true for the godly, and that's true for the ungodly alike. Your habit, your character can be godly influenced or ungodly influenced. And your character can be godly or it can be ungodly. In order for us to be blessed and live blessed, we need to do it God's way. We need to walk hand in hand with the living God and return to your rightful place of inheritance. David says, you anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. God bless you. Saints of the Most High.